Hi, I'm Mrs. Zeknoyan. And I'm Mrs. Culbertson. And we want to welcome you to Valley Oaks Virtual Farm Camp. We are so happy that you made it with us here today. We are so sad we couldn't do it in person, but we are pleased to know that you can join us on this very special YouTube page. So today you're going to learn a little bit more about ladybugs. First, I'm going to read a cute story about a ladybug and then Mrs. Culbertson. I'm going to dazzle you with ladybug facts. And last but not least, we are going to do a ladybug art project. So again, thank you for joining us for virtual farm camp through Valley Oaks. Hi, and let's get started with The Grouchy Ladybug by Eric Carl. It was night and some fireflies danced around the moon. At five o'clock in the morning, the sun came up and a friendly ladybug flew in from the left. It saw a leaf with many aphids on it and decided to have them for breakfast. But just then a grouchy ladybug flew in from the right. It too saw the aphids and wanted them for breakfast. Good morning, said the friendly ladybug. Go away, shouted the grouchy ladybug. I want those aphids. We can share them, suggested the friendly ladybug. No, they're mine, all mine, screamed the grouchy ladybug. Or do you want to fight me for them? If you insist, answered the friendly ladybug sweetly. It looked at the other bug straight in the eye. The grouchy ladybug stepped back. It looked less sure of itself. Oh, you're not big enough for me to fight, it said. Then why don't you pick on somebody bigger? I'll do that, screeched the grouchy ladybug. I'll show you. It puffed itself up and flew off. At six o'clock, it met a yellow jacket. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Wanna fight? If you insist, said the yellow jacket, showing its stinger. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At seven o'clock, it met a stag beetle. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Wanna fight? If you insist, said the stag beetle, opening its jaws. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. Mm -hmm. At eight o'clock, it came across the prey mantis. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the prey mantis, reaching out its long front legs. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At nine o'clock, it almost flew into a sparrow. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, want to fight? If you insist, said the sparrow, opening its sharp beak. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At 10 o'clock, it saw a lobster. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the lobster, stretching its claws. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At 11 o'clock, it bumped into a skunk. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the skunk, starting to lift its tail. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At 12 o'clock, it spotted a boa constrictor. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the snake, right after lunch. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. 
At one o'clock, it happened upon a hyena. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, want to fight? If you insist, said the hyena, laughing eerily and showing its teeth. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At two o'clock, it met a gorilla. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, want to fight? If you insist, said the gorilla, beating its chest. Oh, you're not big enough, said the ladybug, and flew off. At three o'clock, it ran into a rhinoceros. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, want to fight? If you insist, said the rhinoceros, lowering its horns. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At four o'clock, it encountered an elephant. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, want to fight? If you insist, said the elephant, raising its trunk and showing its big tusk. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At five o'clock, it met a whale. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, want to fight? But the whale did not answer at all. You're not big enough anyway, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. Huh? At 5.15, the grouchy ladybug said to one of the well's flippers, Hey, you, want to fight? But it got no answer. So then it flew on. Huh? At 5.30, the grouchy ladybug said to the well's fin, Hey, you, want to fight? But it got no answer. So it flew on. At a quarter to six, the grouchy ladybug said to the whale's tail, Hey, you, want to fight? And the whale's tail gave that grouchy ladybug such a slap that it flew across the sea and across the land. At six o'clock, the grouchy ladybug arrived right back where it had started from. Ah, uh, here you are again, said the friendly ladybug. You must be hungry. There are still some aphids left. You can have them for dinner. Oh, thank you, said the wet, tired, and hungry ladybug. Soon all the aphids were gone. Thank you, said the leaf. You are welcome, answered both ladybugs, and they went to sleep. The fireflies who had been sleeping all day came out to dance around the moon and the end. Hopefully you enjoyed the grouchy ladybug. And now if you'd like to push pause and then we will be going into our ladybug lesson with Mrs. Culbertson. Good morning, everyone. It's Mrs. Culbertson. I wanna welcome you to farm camp. Today, we're gonna to be talking about ladybugs. Do you like ladybugs? Well, I sure do. In fact, I think if you asked your friends and your family, most people would agree that they like ladybugs too. What's not to love? They're brightly colored, they're friendly. You can find them in your backyard most spring through fall. And the best part is they won't hurt you. Ladybug. That's what we call them here in America. But in other parts of the world, they refer to them as the lady bird beetle. That's right, the ladybug is a beetle. Now, because she's a beetle, she's also an insect. And we're gonna take a look here. Like most insects, she has a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. And if we take a look at her body in this image, you can see that her head has the antenna and the eyes. It also keeps her mouth parts. Now the antenna are important because that's how she's going to smell, taste, and feel her way through her world. 
She doesn't have very good vision. In fact, ladybugs see in black and white. Behind the head is this part right here called the pronotum. Now the pronotum's job is to protect the head. And in some species, she even has white dots that kind of look like eyes. Behind the pronotum is the body of the bug. Now, you have a skeleton and I have a skeleton. It's what keeps our bodies up, sh up straight and gives us shape and form. But the ladybug, because she's an insect, has an exoskeleton. And right here, if we take a look at these objects that look like wings, they're actually the elytra. And the elytra's job is to protect the wings. And here's the wings right here. Now there are over 5,000 different types of ladybugs in the world. Here in America, we have about 500 different types. And ladybugs can come in all sorts of colors. We have red, yellow, orange ladybugs, gray, black, brown, and even pink ladybugs. Now you might be asking yourself, do all ladybugs have spots? And the answer is no, some ladybugs are born without spots. If you went into your backyard, the chances of you finding a ladybug are pretty good. And it would most likely be the seven spotted ladybug. Now, just because it's called the seven spotted ladybug doesn't mean that it's going to have seven spots. All the ladybugs, they're each unique. Now, what do ladybugs like to eat? That's a great question. Well, ladybugs come into a classification that people like to call them as beneficial bugs. Beneficial bugs would be like a honeybee, a praying mantis, a predatory stink bug, and even an assassin bug. A beneficial bug is a bug that can help us by eating different bugs that hurt our plants and our crops. Our ladybug, her favorite meal is an aphid. And an aphid likes to suck the juice out of plants and it damages the plants. So gardeners and farmers alike like to use ladybugs to eat the aphids. A ladybug can eat 50 aphids in a day. Now that may not seem like a lot to you, but over the course of her lifetime of three years, that's over 54,000 aphids. And that's a lot of aphids. Now, if you look at our ladybug, a red ladybug on a green leaf, does she blend into you? No, she kind of stands out. So what do you call it when an animal blends in with its environment? If you look down here, you can see that I have a picture of a green frog on a green leaf. Does that frog blend in or stand out with its environment? It blends in and we call that camouflage. Does a ladybug look like she's camouflaged? Now, why would that be? Why would our ladybug want to stand out? Let's take a look at these two pictures of two other types of frogs. Are they camouflaged? We have a blue and a yellow frog and a red and a blue frog. No, those frogs stand out. And a lot of times in nature, when animals stand out, it's a warning to other animals to not to eat them. Now our ladybug is the same way. So have you ever held a ladybug and in the palm of your hand, you'll have a yellow liquid? Well, that liquid is a toxin. Now it's not gonna hurt you and it won't hurt me, but that toxin doesn't taste very good. So if you're a bird and you eat a ladybug and it secretes that yellow liquid from the back of its legs, it's not gonna taste good and you're gonna spit it out. And the next time you might think twice about eating a ladybug. So you also might be asking yourself, are all ladybugs girls? I have been referred to referring to them as she or her, but no, actually ladybugs can be both boys and girls. So let's talk a little bit about that life cycle. Now we talked about ladybugs having a favorite food. So what she's going to do is she's gonna find a plant with lots of aphids on it as a food source for her babies. And she's gonna lay her eggs on the underside of the leaf. And in about a week or so, what's gonna come out of that egg 
is a larva. Now the larva doesn't look like the ladybug that we love. It looks like a funny little ant or maybe even an alligator. And the first thing our larva is gonna do is eat the egg sac. And then it's gonna go on the hunt for aphids. And it's gonna eat and grow and eat and grow. Now we have skin that grows with our bodies. But remember, I told you that a ladybug has an exoskeleton, that hard, crunchy outer, outer um, skin for it. Well, that's not gonna stretch. So when the shell starts feeling a little too tight, this uh, larva is gonna do something very special. It's going to molt or shed its outer shell. So it's going to go through that process a couple times and then once it's big enough, it's going to attach itself again to a leaf and it will kind of look like it's going to sleep. There's not going to be a lot of movement, but it's really busy what's going on inside there, inside the pupa. It is busy and it's changing from a larva into a ladybug. And once it hatches in a couple weeks, the cycle will start all over again. Now, if you want to take a look at my ladybugs, I got these ladybugs off of Amazon. I paid about $15 for them, and I got 1,500 ladybugs. That's 1,500 ladybugs. Now, you can buy these, but if you want them to eat the bugs on your plants, don't release them in the daytime. What you want to do is wait till dark, because ladybugs won't fly at night, and you're gonna take a water bottle and miss that water bottle or miss that plant with water. These ladybugs have been traveled, traveled across the country, so they're hungry and they're thirsty. So if you want them to stay, you need to give them some water. Then, hopefully, with, if you have a good food supply, your ladybugs will stay around for a while. Well, that's all for ladybugs, kids. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the craft with Mrs. Ignoyan. Hi, and welcome back. So right now, Mrs. Culbertson did a fabulous job explaining about the ladybug and the ladybug cycle. Well, right now we are going to get started and we are going to do our art project ladybug. So right now, what I need you to do is go get the materials that you're going to need to complete this project. So I am going to tell you what that is. Um, and we will get started. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the materials that you are going to need in order to make this project. So right off the bat, you are going to need a glue bottle. You are going to need a pair of scissors. You are going to need the two googly eyes that were found in your science camp uh, packet that came in the mail in the Ziploc baggie. You are going to need a brad, and then you're also going to need your um, ladybug pattern, which has actually three pieces. It has the base of it, it has its um, plastic um, wax paper, and then you're also going to have the top cover. Now, some of you are saying, um, my ladybug's yellow, or oh, my ladybug pattern's white, or pink, or something like that. Well, don't forget that Mrs. Culbertson had mentioned that not all ladybugs are red. Mine just happens to be red and some of yours will be red, but there are also some of you that have pink and white and yellow. So remember, ladybugs can come in different color patterns. So right now, I'm gonna push, have you push pause again so you can go get all of your materials and then we will get started to make our ladybug look like this ladybug. All right, before we actually get started putting our ladybug together, we are going to do a sentence writing on the back portion of your ladybug. So go ahead and get your back portion of your ladybug, and you will, I forgot to mention, go get a pencil. So if you need to push pause, I'm not gonna pause this right now, but if you need to push pause to go get a pencil, go ahead and get that really quick. All right, so what we're gonna do is on the back of our ladybug, we're gonna talk about some of the things that Mrs. Colber Colbertson um, mentioned about ladybugs. And like on this one that we had that Mrs. Williams um, had already put together, it says ladybugs have fragile wings. And as we can tell, Mrs. Williams did a great job. She has a capital letter and she has a period. Now I'm not gonna worry about spelling on this, but I am gonna um, be looking for, do you have a capital and do you have a punctuation mark? Because I know that in her K-1 class, she has been really focusing on that. 
So here we go. And I'm gonna give you some ideas. I'm gonna put this right here so it doesn't fly away because it's kind of windy out here today. So here is my sample. So I'm gonna put that here and I'm gonna actually give you some ideas that Mrs. Culbertson talked about when she was talking about the ladybugs and what makes them so unique. And one of them that I just love is that she said, farmers love ladybugs. And so here we go. So um, at the very end of this, I will pause this on all of the sentences so that you can choose to use one of mine or you can choose to use one of your own. But let's read this together. It says, farmers love ladybugs. And as you can tell, I don't have a period on this one. I actually have an exclamation mark. And that's because we are showing excitement because it's true, farmers do love ladybugs because they eat the aphids that actually ruin um, the plants that they have. Do I have a capital letter? Yes, I do. The next sentence that you could choose to write would be this one right here. It would be ladybugs can fly. Oh, they definitely can. Let's read it with me again. Ladybugs can fly. Do I have my two finger touch? I do. I have a capital and I have a period. Oh, there's one of our sight words that I think almost all of you know by now. Here's another sentence that we have right here. And this one, let's read it together. I'll read it first. Ladybugs have delicate wings. Let's do our two finger touch. Do I have a capital and a period? Yes, I do. So you could choose to use that one. Now maybe you don't know what delicate means. That kind of means fragile or that can be broken. So delicate is kind of like a, a really cool word. Um, the last sentence that I will actually let you use if you want to use one of mine, it's this one. And let me read it first. It says ladybugs can be red, pink, yellow, white, black, orange or brown. Oh my goodness, that is a long sentence, but I love it because it's so many adjectives and it describes what ladybugs can be. And as you can tell, not all ladybugs are red. So let's do our two finger touch. I did my two finger touch. I see that it's a capital and a period. So I know that I am good. So you can choose to use any one of these four sentences to put inside your ladybug. I'm gonna pause it right here when I say pause and that you can then choose one of these than to write on your ladybug. So right now, go ahead and push pause when I tell you again, I keep saying that, and then um, you can copy or you can choose one of your own sentences. So go ahead, you can choose um, one of them, push pause and fill out your ladybug. Okay, so hopefully you have got um, all your materials. So the first thing that you're going to do is you are going to add your spots on your ladybug. Now, I think I forgot to tell you that you will also need a black crayon. So if you need to push pause again, I'm not gonna have you actually do it on this one, but go ahead and go get a black crayon because you do need to add your spots. So what you're gonna do, I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds and I just want you to add spots on your ladybug. So right now, go ahead and get your black crayon and go ahead and add spots wherever you would like to add to your ladybug. All right, so I added my spots. Now, my spots are actually little, but as you can tell, uh, Mrs. Williams was kind enough to uh, make one of these as well, and her spots were bigger. So it doesn't matter what size that you make your spots, or even if you have to have any spots, because don't forget, um, when Mrs. Culbertson was talking about ladybugs, she even mentioned that some ladybugs do not even have any spots. So yours can look different than mine. And again, they can be different colors. So from there, you're going to take your ladybug and you are going to take its wings or actually its shell. And you are going to take the plastic or the wax paper and you're going to put them together. And then you're going to take your brad that you have right here. And I'm going to show you this and then I'll push pause again so it'll give you time to do it. So you're going to actually match them up together. Then you're going to take your brad and then you're going to insert it inside of this. Now you're gonna to have to push kind of hard so it actually goes through. And then from there, you can take it and you can add it to your other one and you can line it up so it's all matched up nicely. And then you're going to push your brad through there so that it's all together one piece. And from, from there, you're then just going to undo your brad so it looks something similar to this. So 
that's what you're going to be doing right now. So what I need you to do is if you need help, because it can be a little tricky if you have a mom or an older sibling or even a um, dad or a grandparent, they are more than welcome to come help you put this part together. So right now, go ahead and push pause and I will let you catch up to that. Great, I hope that all worked out really nice for you. From there, you're going to now grab your scissors and you are going to not do the whole thing together, but you're going to do the shell and the wings, which would be the wax paper. And together, you're going to just cut up this line right here that goes through the center of your ladybug. So I'm gonna do it from this direction and I'm just gonna go right up the front all the way to the top almost so that when I open it up, I can actually see what's underneath it and that it will twist like that and yours will look just like mine, okay? All right, so now from there, we need to add our eyes. So I will have you make sure that you have your glue and you need to get your googly eyes ready. So I'm going to just show you that really quick. Actually, go ahead and I'll push pause so that you can go get these items ready. All right, so here we go with our glue and our googly eyes. So then you're just gonna pick a spot where you would normally have your glue. Now, some of you may not have a glue, you may have to use a glue stick and that's fine. Just that Elmer's glue or a school glue actually works a little bit better because it'll make the googly eyes stick. So now we have our eyeballs. Now you can go ahead and you can add a nose, you can add a smile, you can add some eyelashes if you wanted to, so that you now can have your ladybug project. All right, so we have our art project done, but I want you to stay tuned because now we're gonna see um, Mrs. Culbertson and um, two of her children, um, Abby and Erin, are going to release our ladybugs in their backyard. So stay tuned and watch that so that if you ever get ladybugs at your house, you know what you need to be doing with them. Thanks again and stay tuned. Okay, so what we're doing right now is the kids are squirting down the rose bush. You can see my rose bush doesn't look too healthy. It's looking pretty bad. So we're gonna spray it down to give our ladybugs some water. And then we're gonna release the ladybugs onto the plant. I'm gonna hold one. So now we're gonna open up our ladybug hut and let the ladybugs out. You might have to give them a gentle tap. That's, that's not good. They're coming. We're going to put them on our rose bush. Stop, 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 stop. That doesn't look like it's very healthy. And the lake bugs will hopefully eat these aphids or mites or whatever it is that's infecting this bush. Mm -hmm. 